Welcome to the Love Lab Podcast, a safe place to get real about sex. Whether you're a man, woman, single, or couple, this is the show for you. We are your hosts, Kevin Anthony and Celine Remy, and we are here to guide you to go from good to amazing in the bedroom and beyond. All right, welcome back to the Love Lab Podcast. This is episode 186, and it's titled The Modern Disaster of Men's Sexual Health and How to Fix It with Dr. Judson Brandeis. Okay, we have quite the show for you today. So man or woman, I think you should both be listening to this because ladies, even though we're going to be talking about a lot of men's health issues here, it would be really good for you to understand what's going on with your man so that you can help him, support him, guide him in the right direction, do all those things that you women do. (laughs) (laughs) And men who are listening, trust me, you're going to learn stuff. I guarantee it. You're going to be introduced to new technologies and new treatments that you didn't even know were available. I guarantee that because some of this stuff was new to us and we do this every day. <laughs> so this is going to be jam packed. We got a lot of questions. We're going to get through as much of it as we can possibly do in one podcast episode. Is everybody ready? I'm ready. Okay. So let's start with a big shout out to our sponsors, Power and Mastery. If you want to join the secret club of men who are great in bed, then check out Power and Mastery at powerandmastery.com. It is the most complete sexual mastery training for men. Whether you want to have harder erections, last longer, or increase your sexual skills, there is something for you at powerandmastery.com. Of course, there is also something for you in today's episode because our guest today is Dr. Judson Brandeis. He is an award-winning urologist and sexual medicine expert, clinical researcher, physician, educator, and a caring clinician and surgeon. So basically, he's got a lot under his belt. Ha, ha, wink. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> that was totally oh. spontaneous. I don't know if you've ever had that bio that's before. The, that's the best introduction I think I've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> you know, th- there's there's more to it. Um, you, the, the Judson is a graduate of Brown University and Vanderbilt University School of Medicine. And one of the things that I love is that Dr. Brandeis is dedicated to helping his patients and men everywhere feel great, look good, and have better physical intimacy. So it's not just about sex. It's also about all the things that makes you a great man. So welcome Judson to the Love Lab podcast. Oh, thank you so much for having me on. It's really a pleasure to be here. Yeah. All right. We're going to dive right in. Now we heard the bio, so we heard some of that stuff, but I always like when we have somebody with your credentials and your background on the show, I always like for you to just Tell the audience a little bit more about you so that they can really understand where you're coming from when we get into some of these issues. Now, um, I understand that you didn't always start specializing in men's sexual health. So as you tell us a little bit about your background, tell us sort of how you became interested in that field and how you ended up being, you know, someone who really specializes in that area. Yeah, it's one of those things that comes together. Uh, over time. So I started out as a history major at Brown University, but always knew that I wanted to be a doctor. And then I did research for a year at American Red Cross under Harold T. Merriman, the guy that figured out how to freeze blood. So think about how many people he's saved. Uh, And then I went off to Vanderbilt for medical school, uh, which was a fantastic place to train. And then to Harvard for a Howard Hughes Research Institute uh, research fellowship and then to UCLA, where I learned surgery and urology, and then uh, into private practice in Northern California, where I helped pioneer surgical robotics, built kidney stone center, pioneered MRI guided prostate biopsies. And then about two or three years ago, I became really interested in regenerative urology. So, you know, men at a certain point lose their ability to get an erection. When I was at UCLA, they, they discovered the mechanism of action behind how Viagra works and how nitric oxide boosts circulation. And uh, one of my professors won the Nobel prize for that. So I was always kind of interested in that, but the regenerative technologies of low intensity shockwave therapy and platelet rich plasma and stem cells were just really fascinating to me. And to be able to help a man regain potency, it's just, it's amazing when these guys come back Uh, after you treat them and have these amazing stories about how they made love to their wives for the first time in five or six years, or, you know, some of my patients are widowed, you know, I haven't had, I haven't been intimate with a woman in 10 or 15 years. 
it's just like, you know, that glow that 16 year olds get, you know, the first time they kiss a girl. So <laughs> it's, it was just, to me, it was just a magical thing to be able to help men get that part of their life back. Yeah. So as we go through this, you've already mentioned a few of the things that we're going to be talking about. So as we go through this episode, I just want listeners to understand, like you, you heard that background. This is, this is somebody who's been on or involved in the cutting edge for a long time. So you're going to get some really fantastic information here. Yeah. And welcome back to some of these, um, technologies, because I'm just fascinated about this. Uh, but before that, uh, in your book, you mentioned, and I know in the pre interview, you were mentioning that men's sexual health is basically a catastrophe at this point in, in, in life. And so could you give us maybe some stats or um, different ideas about what's really going on with men these days? And maybe that will help to our listeners feel less alone in what's going on for them. Yeah, absolutely. So a hundred years ago, women lived one year longer than men in the United States. Now women live five years longer than men. So, you know, what happened in those a hundred years and longevity for Caucasian men is actually declining mm. because of suicide, alcoholism, and opioids. And that was even before COVID who knows what, you know, what really happened during COVID and men are half as likely to go to the doctor as women are. So even though men are living less long, our longevity is declining. We're not reaching out for help. So 40% of men are obese. 50% of men have high blood pressure. 15% of men smoke. 12% of men don't even have health insurance. So how are we going to improve our health when some of these basic things we're not doing? That's yeah. really the catastrophe. And when you mention all of these health issues, obviously it tends to translate to poor circulation, which leads to their penises not functioning properly. Uh, so erection issues and, and probably also like prostate issues, so many different things. It, I've been in this field for over a decade. And something that I found fascinating is when I started working with men I mostly had older gentlemen who came to visit me who had issues with erections and, and things like that. Nowadays, my clientele is so much younger. I, I have clients that are like even younger than me. They're in their 20s. And I'm like, they already have erection issues. I have witnessed that it's like getting younger and younger that men are experiencing things that were considered to be like older men issues. Have you seen that too in your practice? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, the people that are, are overweight, right, are sedentary. So like, just there are a couple of things that come with that. First of all, it, poor food choice, right? So the foods that are going to clog your arteries affect your circulation. Second of all, if you're sedentary, your body's not going to make as much testosterone, right? So hunters always had higher testosterone than farmers, because if you're going to be out in the plains taking down a buffalo, you're going to need a lot of testosterone, but if you're going to be in the farm, just planting seeds and harvesting seeds, not that farming is not a, a physically active, but you know, the, the juxtaposition of, of, of hunting and farming is, is pretty dramatic. You know, you don't need as much testosterone. Your body is really smart. It doesn't make stuff that you don't need. So if you don't need high levels of testosterone, it's not going to make high levels of testosterone, right? So if you're sitting in front of a computer all day, and then you're playing video games for fun and you're eating bad food, you're not going to produce a lot of testosterone, which is going to not create much libido. And then if you're obese, get what, guess what happens in fat? fat aromatizes testosterone into estrogen. So it affects yes. the balance of testosterone and estrogen. So a lot of guys think, well, I only have testosterone, but no, both men and women have testosterone and estrogen. In fact, if you look at the chemical structure of testosterone and estrogen, the only difference is a single hydrogen uh, atom. The smallest unit of matter is the difference between the male hormone and the female hormone. So in fat, testosterone gets converted to estrogen. That's why when you're fat, you get these man boobs, right? So that's why that's one of the multitude of reasons why men are getting erectile dysfunction earlier and earlier. You're exactly right. Yeah. And I really love how you bring in the lifestyle component 
because a lot of the things that men just used to do as naturally being part of men, we don't do anymore in society. And so, like you said, our bodies are responding and not producing the testosterone. So this is, I mean, I, if you've listened to the show at all, uh, anybody who's listening, you know that I, you know, I'm big into martial arts and downhill mountain biking, rock climbing, like all this kind of stuff. And one of the problems I've always seen is that men don't do that kind of stuff anymore. Like you said, they're literally sitting around playing video games all day. And I just want the listeners who are listening, like if that's you, okay, I, I'm, I'm not judging you for that, but understand how that is affecting your physical body and your health, not just because you put on a few extra pounds that eventually one of these days you're going to get back into the gym and, and lose those, but it has much further reaching uh, implications than just that. One of the things that I really appreciated about the book, which we'll talk about more as we go, I'll hold it up here. 21st century man. <laughs> One of the things that I really appreciated about it is that it does bring in the lifestyle stuff. It does bring in diet. It brings in exercise. It brings in mental health. It brings in all of these types of things that in the past, we, we, really, we really couldn't get from mainstream medical. Like I remember when I was in my 20s, um, I suffered from respiratory infections my whole childhood. And I finally, on my own, realized that I had a food allergy. And once I stopped eating dairy, they just disappeared. But at that point in time, medical science was still saying, there's no such thing as a food allergy. That's impossible. That can't possibly be your problem. You just have asthma, take your steroid inhaler and everything will be fine. Right. And I just love that. Finally, finally, we have something here like this that incorporates all of that stuff together because it's not isolated. No, it's, you know, it's all connected and erectile dysfunction really is highly connected. That's really why the book is 101 chapters and 900 pages is because I started with erectile dysfunction in men over 50, but really there are so many things that can affect your ability to get an erection. For example, I had a patient the other day, 34 years old, and he came in with erectile dysfunction. And so we were talking and my, my input time that I spend with the patient is about an hour because I really, really get to know my patients inside and out and it, things didn't quite make sense. And so I said, well, how are you sleeping? He goes, oh, you know, I got really bad sleep apnea. Mm. I said, well, that's the reason mm -hmm. because at night when you're asleep, you should be getting 30 to 60 minutes of erections. And if you don't enter REM sleep, then you're not getting nighttime erections. Your penis isn't getting exercise and you're going to get erectile dysfunction. And so I told him, I said, listen, I'm not going to do anything for you till you get a sleep evaluation. I sent him to Mike Murphy, who wrote the sleep chapter in the book. He's a professor at Stanford. You know, everyone that wrote chapters in the book, their credentials are just will blow you away. You know, they train at the top institutions in this country, you know, this not, um, I, I wanted to create a book that the quality of the medical information was just absolutely first rate. Um, but at the same time, this book doesn't shame you. It doesn't judge you. I understand because I see thousands and thousands of men as patients. You can't tell a man what to do. <laughs> if you, yeah, you can't. I mean, if you tell a guy what to do, he's going to be like, screw you. I'll do whatever the hell I want to do. <laughs> right. You have true. to provide information, really good information from good sources to men. And men will make good decisions based on good information. And that's really what the, for example, I had a patient, 57 year olds old, the guy's a dentist, right? And he's been smoking all his life. He knows better. He's tried to quit smoking a couple of times. Um, and so we were talking and, and he has erectile dysfunction because of cardiovascular disease, because of his smoking. But I, I told him, I said, listen, you're going to lose 13 years of your life expectancy if you smoke. He's like, oh, yeah, yeah, I know that. I said, okay, do me a favor. I said, I don't, whatever you want to do, I don't care. But just do one thing for me. Write down on a piece of paper, 13 years lives of life lost and tape it on your daughter's door so that every time you walk into your daughter's room, 
you'll be reminded that you're going to lose 13 years of life, you know, knowing her with her. Ooh, ooh, and you know what? That's a powerful. month later, he came back not smoking anymore. <laughs> <laughs> just finding the proper motivation. Right? I didn't tell him to stop smoking. I just told him to put a little sign up on his daughter's door that's going to educate him and remind him of the consequences of his decision. And then he made the right choice. Well, you just saved him probably a decade of therapy. <laughs> <laughs> so there was a great piece of advice too for all the women listening, right? You cannot tell your man what to do, but you can inspire him and provide him information. And provide him information to motivate him. That or also just buy the book. Well. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> buy him sure. the book. You know, it's so funny in my office, right? Because I, I I have I only see men, but but sometimes I'll have spouses that come in with their husbands and I'll, you know, the husband will go into a room to do treatment or whatever. And the wife will come up to me and she'll kind of whisper. And she's like, you know what? Thank you so much. I've been telling him this for so many years. And for some <laughs> reason he listens to you. And I don't care whether he listens to me or he listens to you. As long as he listens to someone and learns how to take care of himself, that's all that matters. <laughs> yeah. You know, we actually get a lot of that in the work that we do too, because there's this thing with spouses where like, sometimes you just cannot hear what they're telling you Yeah, yeah, of course. for a whole bunch of reasons. So having somebody third party that's, that's, they can trust to say the same thing means a lot. Okay. I want to dive into ED y yes, that's and treatments because we've started some of that. Yes. And, um, you know, obviously, honestly, the show is only going to be 45 minutes short <laughs> and there's so much more. So get the book because you'll get so much more information, but I'm super fascinated about some of the treatments in regards to uh, ED or erection difficulties um, or dysfunctions really for men. And one in particular, maybe that we can start with is the gains wave. Um, I don't know if you say therapy or uh, procedure yeah. or whatever, right. Um, tell us more about how, how it works and uh, the potential for helping men with that. And, and I want to add to that also why it's different than, you know, because most, most men, if you, if you ask them, oh, well, you know, what treatments are available, they're just going to say, oh, it's Viagra. that little blue pill thing, right? <laughs> How it's different from that. Yeah. You know, if, if you don't mind, I'll kind of pull back okay. uh, and, and give you sort of an algorithm and an overall, uh, my overall kind of thoughts on erectile dysfunction, mm -hmm. which is, a circulatory issue and a really, really important thing. If you don't get anything from this podcast today, uh, the most important thing to understand is once you get erectile dysfunction, the clock is ticking because it's 10 years, five to 10 years before you're going to develop major cardiovascular disease, whether it's a heart attack or a stent or angioplasty or a stroke or whatever. So that's God's way of warning you that your circulation is getting clogged because the arteries to the penis are one or two millimeters in size. The arteries to the heart are three to four millimeters in size. So guess what's going to get clogged first? Of course, the arteries to the penis. So once that happens, if you don't make lifestyle changes, eat better, exercise more, uh, stop smoking, stop drinking so much, et cetera, et cetera you're going to look at much, much bigger problems down the road. So that's, that's problem number one. Now, God is smart because he knew that the way to get to a man was through his penis. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Well, you know, kind of mixed, right? Because he did put a, uh, a waistline through a recreational area. <laughs> okay. So in order to get an erection, there is a signal and there's pipes, okay? The signal comes from a molecule called nitric oxide. And all of your body's circulation is dependent on nitric oxide. And as you get older, just like your testosterone goes down, your IGF-1 goes down, your human growth hormone goes down, guess what? Your endogenous production of nitric oxide goes down. So by the age of 50, most men have 50% of the nitric oxide that they had when they were younger. And that means you have less circulation and that affects you athletically. That affects you cognitively, that affects your blood pressure and it affects erectile dysfunction, right? So I have a supplement called Affirm 
which is available at affirmscience.com that boosts nitric oxide. And there are two pathways. There's the citrulline pathway and the nitrate pathway. The citrulline is watermelon and nitrate is beets. So any article that you read on foods for erectile dysfunction, tell you eat watermelon, eat beets, you know, for something like a firm, you'd have to eat four pounds of fresh watermelon and like two pounds of beets, or you can just take a couple of tablets. But in any case, you need nitric oxide, right? Nitric oxide creates a, something called CGMP, right? And you don't need to know what CGMP is other than CGMP leads to a cascade of events that opens up blood vessels. Now there's an enzyme that's only in the penis called PDE5. And PDE5 breaks down CGMP. So it reduces CGMP. So it closes blood vessels. So if you take a PDE5 inhibitor like Viagra, Cialis, Levitra, then you block PDE5 and you keep more CGMP. And so you keep more signal to keep blood vessels open. Okay, so the, the first two things that in my algorithm is boost nitric oxide. And the great thing about it is there are overall health effects of boosting nitric oxide and inhibit PDE5. And I put a lot of my patients on something called Tadalafil, which is generic Cialis. In my office, it's a buck a pill. You can take it before you go to sleep and you maintain or improve nighttime erections because you should be getting 30 to 60 minutes of erections every night. Otherwise your penis isn't getting enough blood flow. So the inner tissue is going to become fibrotic and you don't stretch the penis as much. So you're like my 60 and 70 and 80 year old guys coming into the office saying my penis is shorter than it used to be. And guess what? Nobody likes a short penis, <laughs> right? Well, I mean, true. you guys are experts. You've heard it all <laughs> in my, in my 25 years of your, being a urologist, no one has ever come in and said, listen, I would like my penile reduction surgery now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and no woman has ever said, I would prefer a short penis. Right. Usually women will say things like, I don't have a problem with it. I'm okay with it. But nobody ever says, that's what I want. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we have the signal, which is nitric oxide. And a great first step is to boost nitric oxide. Um, you know, 30 and 40 year olds that have... So you should be getting a morning erection or erections every night. If you begin to lose nighttime erections, a super easy thing to do is to start taking a couple of firm pills before you go to sleep. And I guarantee you, you'll get better nighttime and morning erections. And it's a super healthy way to do it. Okay. Now the other part of it are the pipes. Okay. And this is where it gets really, really interesting because as we get older, we begin to clog our pipes, whether we're smoking or we're not eating well, or, you know, um, we're just living in California. Yeah, we live in America, polluted. you know, <laughs> exactly. You know, who knows the effects of all these toxins and plastics and all that crap that's in our environment these days. Mm -hmm. um, so how can we improve the vascularity of the penis? Okay. And there's really two amazing new technologies. One is called gains wave or low intensity shockwave therapy or acoustic wave. There's like a ton of names for this, but basically what it is, is it uses high intensity pulses of sound waves or shock waves. I don't want to get into the physics of it, but what that does is it shakes or vibrates a blood vessel, right? And when that blood vessel shakes or vibrates, it thinks it's being injured. And when it thinks it's being injured, it generates an inflammatory response, right? When you get injured, you get an acute inflammation, not a chronic inflammation that everyone thinks is bad, but an acute inflammation. And part of that acute inflammation is a healing response. And part of that healing response is activation of stem cells because we have stem cells all around our body. And release of growth factor and stem cells that are activated plus growth factor or proper growth factor can result in what's called neoangiogenesis or the growth of new blood vessels. 
Are you with me? Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. So absolutely. good. We're okay. just shaking our head. I'm like, this is amazing. And, and it's very, very clear the way you explained it. I just wanted to give you enough space to complete All right. what you were saying. I, you had, I was, I just want to make sure I wasn't, because sometimes I talk a lot of scientific stuff and, no, and not uh, people's so, eyes glaze over. And <laughs> So we, we are not doctors by any means, but we do have a pretty, pretty deep background in we, we biohackers and, yeah we're we, exactly yeah, we're yeah. Bio. so we, okay. we this is you should see our bookshelf and the stuff we replace excellent i have actually I, when i got this book i went straight to the chapters on sexual health and i've already read all the chapters where you're describing this so i'm with you i got you. awesome <laughs> okay. now the other really really cool thing is the chapter written by charles runnels who invented what's called the pea shot or the priapus shot that's okay. the next one I wanted to talk about. Yeah. Yes, Justin, so, keep going. <laughs> yeah, so the, the pea shot is basically a platelet injection. So the platelets in our body do two things. Everyone knows they do one thing, which is to cause clots, right? But the good Lord created this amazing system where the, the platelets go to form the clot, but then all of a sudden they release growth factor. So they're releasing growth factor exactly where you need it at the exact time that you need it. So Kevin, say you're rock climbing and you fall a little bit and you cut yourself and you get some bleeding, right? And then the, the blood clots, but that tissue grows back pretty quickly, right? Especially relate, you know, in comparison to the rest of the tissue, like how does that happen? And the reason it happens is that platelets have 141 different growth factors sitting inside a little, you know, little ball, right? And so when platelets are activated, they put their arms out like a starfish, grab onto other platelets, form a clot. But when they do that, they release these things called alpha granules and inside alpha granules are all these growth factors. And so it accelerates healing. So what we do is we draw blood, we spin the blood down. When you spin blood, the red blood cells are is heavy because it's got iron in it, goes to the bottom. The plasma, which is basically the water that your blood floats in, goes to the top. And in the middle, you have white blood cells and platelets, and you can draw out the platelets and then you inject it. You know, So the O-shot, you inject it into the clitoris, the vampire facelift, you can put it on your face. These are two things that Charles did. And then the other thing is you can inject it into the penis, which sounds excruciatingly painful, but I guarantee you, it's not so bad. And I've done it to myself two, three, four times. And I do it with my patients and I have a technique, an ultrasound guided technique where patients don't even wince. Um, so, and that's, and that's like putting fertilizer on, uh, you know, growing little trees. So shockwave, what it does is it stimulates Jeez. stem cells, right? So now you're growing little plants and then PRP, you put it onto those little growing plants and it accelerates the growth of vascular tissue. Yeah. You know, there's a couple of things that I love about that particular type of technology, which is that basically what it's doing is stimulating the body's system to heal itself. And that to me, that has always been the best kind of treatments rather than trying to put a bandage on something or do something artificial, the types of things that can stimulate your body to go, Oh, I better get in gear and fix this. I, I think are always the best and, and most lasting treatments. And that's what I really appreciate about these types of technologies. Plus you're using your own, uh, your own blood really and, and plasma and cells. Uh, so again, it's like not something from the outside. It's your own uh, body that is helping itself, which I think is really amazing too. It can get more individualized. Let's put it this way. Absolutely. And then if you, if you're interested about the process, like literally I've seen it, if you go on YouTube and type that, you can see people like when they draw the blood and they shake it, like you can see the whole thing. It's fascinating. If, I mean, if you're like me, I love this. Yeah. Kind of thing. I, ha I, I have that. a, um, I have a YouTube channel, just Brandeis MD. And I have a whole playlist on PRP. I have a whole um, men's sexual health curriculum. So I talk about, you know, really most of the stuff that I have in the book and I'm going to, I, 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 I narrated some of the chapters. I'm going to put those on the book and on the YouTube channel and also on my, um, on the website, which is the 21st century man all written out in letters and then on brandismd.com, which is my website. Awesome. So you can find all of that now. 
So we've got, we've got a couple more things that I really want to make sure that we talk about before yes. we run out of time. The, the next one is about Peroni's disease. And the reason why we really want to ask about this is one, because I know that you've got some uh, treatments that you can use for that. But two, believe it or not, even though from what I understand, it's technically not that common. It says like in your book, I think it said 5% of men. Uh, yeah, about are... one out of every 20 men. Yeah. But what's interesting about that is we have had multiple clients mm -hmm. with that particular condition. And so I would love for you to talk a little bit about sort of what it is, why it forms, and how you deal with it. And also, I'm going to add something to that, uh, because I think some men self-diagnose themselves Peronis because they have a curve, but having a curve doesn't particularly mean that you've got Peronis disease. There's probably other things to look for. And I really want to know, uh, does jerking off create Peroni's disease, is it if you do it with one hand versus the other hand or too, too harsh? Well, you know, th I... these are all things that clients say, <laughs> exactly. I, I broke it because I was doing it wrong. You know? <laughs> yeah, but well, seriously, God bless you guys for actually being a resource for, for patients, um, because people have questions and it's not something that we're typically taught a lot about. I mean, let's be honest, uh, you know, they're, they're, pulling books off the shelf left and right. And, and, you know, there's this like prude police, you know, that, um, <laughs> that, uh, that doesn't, you know, is either afraid of people learning these things or doesn't want people learning these things, but, you know, let's be honest, you know, everyone's interested in these things. And that's the beauty of the 21st century man is that I have the world experts, you know, talking about these things, you know, the sex on the beach chapter that I wrote, which is basically how things go right. And then erectile dysfunction explained, which is how things go wrong. And then chapter on orgasm, you know, but what is an orgasm? What's premature orgasm? What's delayed orgasm? And then an overall approach to erectile dysfunction. But then we have chapters written by like Ed Cartman is the best um, penile implant surgeon that I've ever worked with. He wrote a chapter on penile implant. Charles Runnels wrote an amazing chapter on PRP. Uh, Jeff Piccarillo, regenerative orthopedist, wrote an amazing chapter on stem cells. The best, if you're interested in stem cells, if you're thinking about having stem cells, this is the single best resource for you to understand what stem cells actually are. What is a mesenchymal stem cell? What is, where does it come from? Uh, we have Dirk Bauer, who is the, the started the fun factory is the best um, sex toy um, company in the world wrote the chapter on sex toys. We have Neely and Poa from uh, global protection that wrote the chapter on uh, condoms. We have information on lubes on uh, trimix. I mean, you name it on gains wave, like everything is there. Any, and then the, the, the icing on the cake is Susan Bratton's chapter on how to make love to a woman. I mean, just fantastic. So, you know, like, it, this is to me the most comp, the most uh, comprehensive approach and scientific approach to erectile function and sexual function. And Peyronie's, there, I wrote the chapter on Peyronie's too. So Peyronie's disease is really a a, a very devastating disease for men. I mean, I, I've grown men cry in my office on a weekly basis because of Peyronie's disease because. Four out of five times, guys don't even know where it comes from. And it definitely does not come from mas masturbating. So, you know, don't worry about it. All right. <laughs> myth number one. Busted. Yeah, myth number one. <laughs> you know, uh, sometimes it comes from, um, you know, traumatic intercourse. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, a woman's on top and, and comes out and then comes back down and, and, jerks the hips problem. just in the wrong angle. And exactly. It snaps. Or, you know, if a guy's, from behind and, mm -hmm. and pulls Mixer. out and yeah. Um, so can be from traumatic intercourse or rough sex. It can be, I think sometimes just from guys getting an erection at night, rolling over on it wrong. Oh. Uh, you know, you wake up, it hurts a little bit, you go back to sleep. And then six, seven weeks later, all of a sudden things start to curve. So four out of five men <laughs> don't know what happened to cause it. Okay. Or you can have what's called a Dupuytren's contracture, which is like a trigger finger, and that's a problem with the collagen in the penis. So uh, the, the number that most people throw around is about one out of every 20 guys. One out of 10 will get better on its own, okay? But nine out of 10 won't. And the earlier you get to a properly trained urologist, the better off you'll be. So the, the inner lining of the penis 
contains two erectile bodies called the corpora cavernosa. And the lining of the corpora cavernosa is what's called the tunica. And the tunica is a vascular tissue because those fill up with blood. And so vascular tissues have to stretch, but the tunica has to be really strong too, because if you fracture your penis, you can't procreate. So evolution has has self-selected for people with strong tunica. But if your tunica doesn't stretch, then you'll have a short penis and you won't be able to reach where you need to reach, right? So um, now the issue is if you traumatize the tunica and cause an injury, you get scar tissue. So the normal tunica is collagen and elastin. Elastin has that stretchiness, but Scar tissue is basically just collagen and keratin. So it doesn't stretch. And so it's strong, but it doesn't stretch. And so because one side stretches and the other side doesn't stretch, the penis will curve to the side with the scar tissue because it's shorter than the other side. Okay. And so this is a really difficult condition to treat. Okay. The earlier you get in, the better. And so Really, the treatments are Zyaflex. Zyaflex is an FDA-approved injection from a company called Endo um, that you inject into the plaque. It's a collagenase, so it's an enzyme that breaks down the peptide bonds between the strands of collagen and allows the penis to kind of reconfigure the collagen to make it more straight. Now, the downsides of Zyaflex, one is it's dreadfully expensive. So it's $4,000 a shot. And usually men need eight shots. Ah. So four pairs of two. And while you're using Zyaflex, you can't be physically intimate, right? You can't have penetrative intercourse because there's a risk that you're causing a weakness in the tunica that you can fracture the penis and then make things worse. Mm-hmm. Right. So there are some downsides of, of using Zyaflex and Zyaflex will usually improve curvature about 35%. Right. So not, tr- nothing, not, not dramatic, much. No. not much, especially for, you know, it's like a thousand bucks a, a degree. So, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right? Okay. Another option is surgery. Um, but I, I've really, even though I used to do the surgery, I stopped doing it because nobody was ever happy. Because you would make guys' penises straight, but they'd be shorter. And we've exactly. already established that people don't like that. <laughs> well, and when you get right. surgery, there's also a chance to build scar tissue again, especially if that's how it exactly. is. So you're taking an extra chance to have either things go back to what they were or be worse. Exactly. And But remind me, after we talk about peyronies, I want to tell you about my penile enlargement uh, clinical research study. Oh, yes, oh, yes really we exciting. are. Trust me, that is <laughs> yeah. on the list to talk about. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. The other treatment option is what's called shockwave therapy. Okay. But it's not the same shockwave therapy that you use for erectile dysfunction. Although on all the patients with Peyronie disease, I do the treatment for erectile dysfunction, but then we use a smaller tip probe and higher power to use uh, mechanical waves to break up those peptide bonds. So with Zyaflex, you're using chemicals to, or enzymes to break up those peptide bonds. With Shockwave, you're using mechanical waves to break it up. And then you have to use a penile traction device. And there's one penile traction device that really stands above all the other penile traction devices developed by the Mayo Clinic. It's called the Restore X device. Okay. And the data on that device is really amazing. So uh, in Peyronie's patients, it will improve with the combination of Zyaflex plus the Restorex, you get an extra 15 degrees of improvement and you get almost an inch of extra length, right? Because it's pulling that scar tissue apart, pulling that collagen. So uh, anyone out there that's getting treatment by their urologist for Peyronie's disease, please make sure that you include the Restorex device in that treatment because the data is much, much better. Is it a vacuum type device or is no, it a stretcher it's a, type it's device? It's a stretcher. Okay. It's a stretcher. Okay, got uh, it. The vacuum, it doesn't create as much pull. Mm-hmm. I, the vacuum are good for lateral pull, right? Okay. For girth, but they're not nearly as good for length. 
Got it. Um, I sometimes, you know, when people come with some scar tissue, I will do some scar tissue remediation and we use like castor oil and different techniques to manually stimulate it. I think it works to a certain degree if somebody's in the beginning or something that's not too bad. Um, what are your thoughts on like, what can you do on your own? Do you think it's enough? Probably not. That's my answer, but I'm curious. Yeah, I've, I've never heard of using castor oil. There is something called the Verapamil. Okay. Um, and a wrap mill gel. Uh, and I actually use wrap mill gel in, um, in the treatments that I do with the shockwave therapy and the restore X device. Um, there's another paper written using emu oil. Uh-huh. Okay. Um, uh, but I've never actually, I was, I asked them about including that in a clinical trial I was doing, um, so we're still working the, the details out on that. So, you know, anything that's in the book and anything that I personally do on any of my patients, I have to see that it's been tested and that it's been tested by legitimate people uh, who have been presenting it at the sexual medicine society meeting or written it up in peer reviewed journals, right? There's, especially with sexual medicine, let's be honest. I mean, the, over the years, people are killing rhinoceroses for their, for their, and horns cutting and, off shark fins, uh, shark fins else. and you know all this i'm sorry but it's all this crazy ass stuff that people do uh and people are so insecure about their sexuality and about their sexual potency and how they measure up to other people and they're looking at pornography thinking you know i'm not as good as that guy i mean i don't watch basketball and say geez i should be as good as michael jordan <laughs> you know so i mean let's just be you know mm-hmm. anyway yeah you know, absolutely just, that you don't <laughs> use shark fins, don't kill rhinoceroses and, <laughs> and really please just use stuff that that's been researched that real doctors who go to school and, and, and research this stuff and think about it and write about it. Just use that kind of stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. So was there anything else on pronies you wanted to add or are we good there? Cause we got, we got at least, uh, you know, thing. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, I can go on for a long time. So <laughs> okay. just, get, get just, the book just tell me to stop and, and, <laughs> and we'll go on to some other stuff. So why don't we do our ad yes. and then we, then we're going to dive into the study on the penile enhancement. Yes. We've all been waiting for that one. So it's coming. <laughs> that's, yeah. That's like a teaser. Like in the Olympics, they put like the, the best person at the very last, you got to watch three hours of That's uh, right. <laughs> to, see one, to see one skier. It was only 40 minutes and we're getting there, you know, yeah. but before that, um, for all of you listening who are in a, a coupleship and feel stuck in a rut, just going through the daily motions instead of connecting the way you used to, and you feel tired of having stale mechanical sex that lacks spontaneity and fun, and you don't want to live a life of average, then Kevin and I would like to invite you to join our highly sexed power couple platinum program. If you give us 90 days, we will help you bring the passion back between the sheets and be synced up sexually so that you can thrive with more purpose and passion in life. Go to CelineRemy.com forward slash passion to learn more about this life-changing program. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we are finally talking about the topic everybody <laughs> wants to know about. So, so this is I'm gonna this is gonna be really interesting. Because we did an episode a while back called "Can You Really Enlarge Your Penis?" And our general conclusion, because we talked about a lot of the usual things that people talk about that they try and they use. Our conclusion at the end of that was generally really not so much because all of the things that all our clients say that they do to make their penis longer. They never last. In other words, yeah, if they keep stretching it, you know, like one guy, one guy emailed us and he was like, yeah. he was like, no, it really does work. Trust me. I just do this and then I do this and then I do this. And I'm like, you're spending an hour a day trying stretching. to make it be stretching. <laughs> and, and you even admitted in the email that he stopped for a while and then he lost it and then he had to go back to it. So to me, that's not really sustainable and not really something that works. And so that was sort of our general conclusion. But I know that you have been involved in a study and you have some interesting results that uh, I would like you to share with our listeners. Yeah. So, uh, you know, at early disclosure, I really don't care how long guys' penises are. (laughs) (laughs) Really? (laughs) I I really, honestly, I really don't. Um, But I do care when guys do things that cause damage. And that was the genesis of the P-Long study is that I would see guys who got fat transfers or 
or hyaluronic acid injections, Mm -hmm. uh, and that paid five or 10,000 bucks for it. And it lasts for a year or two. And then you get a lumpy, bumpy penis or fat gives you this kind of squishy, like -like Mm Play-Doh-like penis. Uh, Or I would see guys that had surgeries like, um, like suspensory ligament ligations, which makes the penis hang lower, but it doesn't improve the length of the penis. Mm -hmm. Right. And then they get scar tissue. And so their penis is shorter and points down, or there's now something called the E-list implant, which is a, like a silicone taco that you put under the skin over the the shaft of the penis. Um, But I've seen three guys who've had that taken out. Uh, It's an expensive surgery. And I think ultimately people are going to be really unhappy five, 10, 15, 20 years down the road. And once it's in, it's in. And so, you know, knowing what I know about PRP and about how to grow tissue, I decided to try to improve both the length and the girth and the function of the penis. And so I hooked up with Dr. Runnels, who's uh, the founder of the, the PRP and the Cellular Medicine Association. We were talking and I created a study. It's IRB approved. So institutional research board approved. It's listed on cl- clinicaltrials.gov. So it's listed by the NIH. You know, I've done research at American Red Cross with Harold Merriman, the guy who figured out how to freeze blood. I've done research in the, um, the Merle and Murray labs where they did the first living related kidney transplant. Uh, and they won the Nobel prize for that. I've done research at UCLA uh, under, and, uh, and so I have some pretty decent research credentials. Uh, and so what this is, is using really high potency PRP. So not just the regular PRP, but we have an orthopedic grade double spin PRP system. We draw 60 cc. So the platelet concentrations we get are really crazy high. And then, so we inject the PRP once a month for six months. And we use the traction device from the Mayo Clinic, the RestoreX. And we use a penis pump from Dr. Joel Kaplan because it's a hand pump and you can get really good girth improvement. Because the thing is, I mean, think about it this way. If you just do traction, right, you're going to get a long, thin penis. And mm-hmm. to be honest, who, who wants a, pe- a pencil penis? <laughs> no, no. Right? We, I would prefer a short one that's wider, more girth exactly. than a long well, one. Well, you know, if you, if you stuff the thing with, with um, filler, yeah. right, it's still going to be short and the head is going to be small. Mm-hmm. So I call that the pig in the blanket penis. <laughs> <laughs> Right. So you don't want a pencil penis and you don't want a pig in a blanket. You know, what you want is symmetrical penile growth. And so a combination of the uh, PRP, high potency PRP, and I developed a special technique uh, for injecting the PRP that I'll start to teach folks after we publish the study, Um, the traction device, uh, the suction device, and the combination is only about 35 minutes in the morning and 35 minutes in the evening. And then using my Affirm nitric oxide boosting supplement available at affirmscience.com to boost circulation and do that for seven months. And what we found, because we've had about a dozen folks go through the study because it kind of got broken up a little bit by COVID, um, is that we can grow penises almost an inch in length and about a quarter to three eighths of an inch in girth and improve function. Now I can't prove to you that the function is improved because by definition, these patients have to have reg- basic normal erectile function. They don't have to be super functioning, but they have to be good enough because the thing is by taking the Affirm before you go to bed, you'll get better nighttime erections. And that's some of the extra stretching that we have as part of the study. Right. So you stretch with the RestoreX, you stretch with the Dr. Joel Kaplan pump, and then you get good nighttime erections by taking the Affirm. Uh, and so we have better length, better girth, and better uh, erectile function. And the interesting thing about the study is most studies on penile length use a flaccid penis and use what's called stretch penile length. So you basically pull the penis and then you measure it. Right. But I could cheat. I could pull a little bit on day one and pull a lot on mm. 
you know, day 300 and say, wow, look, I grew a penis two inches. Mm -hmm. But what I do is I have guys get erections at home. I send them home with a ruler and a tape measure and they measure length and girth. And then they send me pictures. So I can prove, because I have thousands of dick pics in my email folder. <laughs> I was going to make that joke. I was like, this is the only time that dick oh, pics are welcome. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if the, Russians, if the Russians ever hacked into my email account, they would really be, they would be in for a big surprise. <laughs> yeah, so um, there's a joint meeting of the International so- Society of Sexual Medicine and the Sexual Medicine Society of North America in October in Miami. And I'm hoping to, uh, to present all of my data there because this really is a safe but effective way, or at least I've been able to show so far, a safe and effective way to uh, grow uh, a man's penis. And it's not going to double in size. You know, all these things we talk about, I mean, let's be, be reasonable and rational. But the interesting thing is almost everyone, I've got people flying in from London, from New York, from, from Arizona, from Colorado, from uh, Washington state to participate in this study. You know, the guys are motivated to have a a bigger, better (laughs) functioning penis. Um, (laughs) And, uh, and if this goes on, uh, if this uh, interview goes on pretty soon, we're recruiting patients through the end of March Uh, at the end of March or the, no, sorry, the end of February, March 1st, we have to cut it off because I need seven months to, uh, uh, to treat. And so that brings me to October 1st. And then at the end of the month, I have of that month, I have to present the data. So really, and it's a screaming deal, 2,500 bucks to participate in this study, which basically just covers the cost of the equipment. My time and my staff's time uh, isn't, you know, we don't charge for um, but it's going to be really exciting because it's going to give guys a, a healthy way with no side effects, right? There's no negative effects of taking your blood, spinning it, taking the platelets out, injecting it with a 30 gauge needle back into your penis 10 minutes later, doing penile traction, being doing penile suction and using the Affirm supplement, you know, is totally, totally healthy. Uh, and so there's no downside at the end of the day, if you do it, and it doesn't work, which I don't think it would, but if it doesn't work, you're not, you're not, you the only thing you're wasting is just your time, right? You're not going to have horrible scar tissue or disfigured penis or a penis does, doesn't work. Cause I've seen all of these things from the other penile augmentation treatments. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's why I'm doing the P-Long study. So I have a question about sort of how it works. I'm assuming that the stretching technique it's kind of like, uh, you know, when you're lifting weights and you're causing micro tears in the muscle and then you're rebuilding, right? Is it, is it kind of like you're, the stretching is kind of doing that and then the platelets uh, are stimulating new growth? Is that kind of how it works? Yeah. So when my wife was pregnant with uh, our twins, uh, she went to the orthodontist and had braces put on. And the orthodontist said he's never seen any adult's teeth move so fast right? Because she has an enormous amount of growth factor coursing through her body because of the babies, right? Uh, And so it's the same principle that you're remodeling collagen. So you're causing, like you said, some damage to the tissue by the stretching, but then the growth factor is helping the regrowth of tissue afterwards. And you ask a really good question at the beginning is, you know, is this permanent? Uh, And I would say, it is because you're remodeling the tissue. Um, but second of all, you're improving erectile function by growing new blood vessels because PRP has been shown in a double blind placebo controlled study out of Greece to uh, improve erectile function. So you're, you're stre- you know, you're getting continued stretching because you have better erectile function. And so, and even it's really exciting. A number of my patients that are local, are continuing to get P shots and continuing to stretch because, you know, they want to see where things go. And so I don't know what the, what the limit is. 
<laughs> well, but people always want to push the limit. <laughs> <laughs> only time will tell. Well, I, I thought it was kind of important because if we if we take that concept and we relate it to something that people can already understand, you know, like building muscle or you know, there's a surgery when people have one leg shorter than another. Well, they'll break the bone, separate a little bit with traction, and then grow new bone in the middle. I mean, they're they're all kind of similar ideas that people can kind of wrap their minds well, around. Hopefully, go, less painful for the penis than yeah, that. Uh, yeah, that's a leg that's thing. a pretty brutal surgery, but. <laughs> But anyway, at least people can understand how that works and then they can start to go, oh, it's it's similar to that. I get it, you know? Yeah, absolutely. I think you're, you you know, Kevin, you're right on the on the money. I mean, you even see pictures of these people from Africa with these extended necks. Yes. You know, with the, I mean, you can stretch body parts. You can. But the PRP is what accelerates that, right? It, it's what makes it um, doable for like the normal person that doesn't want to have a peanut traction device on for nine hours a day for nine months. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I've seen people who had regrown their fo- foreskin and um, part of the training when I went through and it was like basically using stretchers. And it, like you said, it's hours and hours a day. I don't even know if he really regrew. In my opinion, he just stretched his skin much more, uh, but he was satisfied with the result and got a kind of new type of foreskin. And that was what was important for him. So um, there are ways. But what I like about the approach that you have is that there's very, very little uh, bad side effect because all the other methods that I've seen that people teach and do, I'm just very skeptical and cautious because I see it being misused. And I've seen too many guys and using the vacuum pump wrongly, doing things to themselves and like having bruises and stuff like that. You're not supposed to bruise. You're not supposed to respond like this. If you're doing it this way, you're doing it wrong. And if you do it too many times wrong, it's going to snap at some point. Well, and, and that's, <laughs> but that's the beauty of, you know, like you, you started this segment by saying you don't care how long men's penises are, but what you do care about is all the stuff that you just said, because you've both witnessed it. You've witnessed guys try all these ludicrous things to try to grow their penis and then literally hurt themselves. Absolutely. So Judson, we are coming towards the end of the podcast and we have one more juicy question that we love to ask our guests. We want to know what is your best sexual talent? Boy, I think my wife uh, <laughs> would better be qualified <laughs> to answer that question. <laughs> I think my best sexual talent is to help men understand uh, circulation, help them understand how they can improve erectile function. And then also help them understand that, you know, sex is part of physical intimacy. It's about, uh, being close to your partner. Uh, it's not just a, especially, you know, when you're in your teens or twenties or, or thereafter, um, you know, it, it can be just a physical act, but as you get older, I think you get a little bit wiser and you understand that it's not just a physical act, but, but it's, it's, it's being connected. It's being in, it's being close to someone. And that, you know, that's part, a good part of the genesis of the mental health parts of the book and the relationship parts of the book is that, um, you know, there's almost like a Maslow's pyramid of, of aging men. And, you have to kind of do everything right to get to the top, which is frequent, um, you know, physical intimacy with your spouse. You know, you have to be physically well, you have to be mentally well, you have to be emotionally well, you have to take care, good care of your relationship. And when you do all of those things, then you can reach that sort of pinnacle, which is more frequent uh, physical intimacy with, with your spouse. Yes, that is Absolutely right. That, that, so now you've basically hit on the work that I do with men, which is trying to help them do all of those things so that they, they can get there because they come to me and they say, I'm not having enough sex with my wife. You got to teach me these tricks or whatever. <laughs> Give me the pill. That's yeah, the, I, yeah, exactly. I, that's like, oh, the move. The yeah, yeah. That's, so, like, that's the, I, mean, I don't need a pill to get a better erection. I need a pill to give to my wife so that she'll have sex. Right, with right. <laughs> so what I then try to do is go, okay, I can, I can help you with that. But what I'm really going to do is teach you how to be the man, the, the right man, the guy that shows up the way he's supposed to show up so that she'll want to have sex with him. It's a lot of, it's, it's a tough job. <laughs> yeah, it's a, that's many lifetimes. It's yeah, <laughs> a lot right. of lifetimes of work. All right. So we know that you've got some things that you would like to promote to the audience. So tell our audience where they can find you, where they can find the book and all that great stuff. 
Yeah, well, you can find me at brandeismd.com, B-R-A-N-D-E-I-S-M-D.com. And also I have a YouTube channel. So I love educating physicians. I love educating, uh, you know, the good folks out there. And so I put a lot of educational content out there on my YouTube channel and also on my website. Uh, And that's the genesis of the book, which is really the ultimate resource guide of basically everything that I've learned over the past 25 years of my education, which is, you know, it's been such a blessing to be educated at such amazing institutions as I've gotten the education from, and then all of my physician colleagues in different fields. So you get basically the best of 60 really top physicians and men's health educators um, in one space. And that's the 21stcenturyman.com, but it's all written out in letters. And I have to say, honestly, if you read the book cover to cover, you are most likely going to know more than you doctor, you regular doctor, because I know Judson had picked like the best of the best, but let's be honest, a lot of doctors out there don't know shit. And honestly, you reading this book will give you much more knowledge than they probably have. So you'll have an edge. Well, uh, you know, I don't know if I would agree entirely with what you said, but, (laughs) but, but I do, uh, I do uh, in the book emphasize that you should be a partner with your physician and your role as a patient is and in a partner in that relationship is to provide your physician with as much information as you possibly can. So your medical history, your list of medications, your imaging studies, your labs, uh, an, a summary of why you're there and a list of questions. And so that will enable, because I, I, I show in the book, the average physician visit is 16 minutes and 14 seconds. And 20% of healthcare professionals say that they're going to leave medicine in the next one to two years because of burnout from COVID. So it's not going to get better. It's going to get worse. So instead of 16 minutes, you might have 14 minutes or 13 minutes. And you want to make sure that you make the most of that time. And there's a formula in the book for how to make the best use of time. And I agree with you that physicians don't know everything. And I love it when patients actually come in with stacks of paper um, and things that they've learned on the internet, because I'll just go through that. And sometimes I'll say, you know, listen, sorry, but this is crap. Sometimes I'll say, you know, this is exactly what I'm going to talk to you about today. And sometimes I'll say, wow, I didn't know that. You know, let me, let me, delve into it. Let me do some research. And I've actually discovered some really interesting things through patients. So, you know, I, what I would say is find a physician that's open to new learning, find a physician that's open to your input because it's your health and find a physician who feels like it's a partnership between the patient and the physician. That is excellent advice. And don't worry, we understand you're in a delicate position. You can't say anything bad about doctor. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that what you said is absolutely correct, is you should be an integral part of the process and not just rely on the other person to tell you everything. And it should be a partnership working between. And yeah, definitely find doctors who are open to new ideas, which they're out there. They're out there. They may not be as easy to find as you would wish they were, but they're out there. Well, and, you know, like, for example, in my prostate chapter, uh, I have information in the prostate chapter that will be ahead of a lot of the urologists out there. Um, But, you know, it's going on at the universities and at some of the top tier private practices. And so it is fair to say, you know, before I do a prostate biopsy, before someone sticks an ultrasound probe up my butt and puts a needle through my rectal mucosa 12 times, I want an MRI. That's fair to say. And it's fair to say, I want an MRI fusion biopsy. If you don't do an MRI fusion biopsy, I want to go to a university or a place that has it. That's totally fair. And, and your physician should respect that. And that's the, that's the level of information that's in the book is, you know, a lot of the chapters are two, three, four, five years ahead of maybe where your local physician is. That doesn't mean your local physician's bad, um, but you may say, listen, I read this in the book. 
do you have this? If you don't have this, can you send me to someone who might have it? You know, and that's perfectly fair and you should never take no for an answer. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for your time, Judson. It was a very great conversation. I believe this is officially our longest podcast and there is so much more to cover. So get the book. All the links will be in the description. We really appreciate your passion, your knowledge and everything that you shared with us today on the show. So thank you very much. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me on. I really appreciate it. All right, everybody, that's all the time. In fact, that's more time than we have for this episode. And we will see you next week. We hope you like this episode of the Love Lab podcast. If you enjoy this show, subscribe, leave us a review, and share it with your friends. And for more free, exclusive content, join us in the Passion Vault at CelineRemy.com forward slash vault. That's C-E-L-I-N-E-R-E-M-Y dot com forward slash vault. Thanks for listening. And remember, you're amazing. <laughs>